Lewis Hamilton now has the most wins, while F3 champion Oscar Piastri prepares for Bahrain. You can now watch full 24-minute episodes of The Inside Line at our new home on unbeaten.com. Six-time F1 world champion Lewis Hamilton is now the most successful driver of all time in terms of most wins, with the Brits storming to his 92nd victory in Portugal last weekend. But incredibly, he is yet to sign a contract with Mercedes for 2021 and beyond, despite admitting he wants to stay and that he's not talking to other teams, with likely just duration and figure to lock down. Hamilton, though, understands businesses are doing it tough during the COVID-19 pandemic, so is in no hurry to ink a deal. Mercedes are on the climb back. I think they're now in a much better place, but everyone's had a big hit this year, he said. The Brit has already admitted his interest in being part of F1's new era in 2022, suggesting that he will sign at least a two-year deal. If it does what it says on paper, I think we're going to see perhaps the best, could be the best era of, of racing that we've seen in a long, long time. And I want to be there if that, if it is the case, because then that's another opportunity for me to continue to show my abilities and, and test, my ability, uh, test my abilities each time I go out. 2020 Formula 3 champion Oscar Piastri will jump straight into an F1 seat this week with the Australian one of three Renault Young Guns to test the RS18 across four days in Bahrain. It's an awesome feeling to be able to, to drive an F1 car. Obviously, it's something that I've been dreaming about basically my whole life. Um, so yeah, massive thank you to the Renault Sport Academy for giving me this opportunity. Piastri will join the French Marks F2 race winners Christian Lungard and Guan Yu Zhou, with the Chinese driver getting two days to himself as the squad's official test driver. For Piastri, the squad hopes his first time in an F1 car is not the last. It's not just a, a taste of it. It is a, a reward, firstly, for winning the title. But giving him a first day is already a plan for us for the next two years or with the ultimate aim of of driving in you know, Formula One with us as a race driver. So this is just the first, first day of many. Red Bull's Max Verstappen is now planning to race in F1 until he's 40, with extra time needed to close in on Lewis Hamilton's records. The Brit's 92nd win in Portugal on Sunday, now the all-time benchmark. Verstappen, now 23, has just nine victories for equal 34th on the list, with Mark Webber and Valtteri Bottas. But many more are expected once the Dutchman gets a front-running car. Verstappen finished third in Portimao, his ninth podium of 2020 and 40th overall, but tipped his cap to Hamilton's accomplishment. It's amazing, what can you say? It's an incredible achievement, 92 victories, and I don't think it stops there. It will go well over 100, he said. Williams star performer George Russell could be out of a drive next year, with the squad's new owners Doralton Capital allegedly keen to boost income from its driver lineup moving forward. With drivers like Sergio Perez available, who it's understood can bring at least 10 million US dollars in sponsorship. Russell, a Mercedes protege, has raised team morale since he arrived as a rookie in 2019 with standout stats, like in qualifying, where he's never been beaten, going 33 nil, including Portugal. But the availability of Perez, along with drivers like Kevin Magnussen, who has sponsored Jack and Jones, could see Russell spend 2021 on the sidelines. The Brit, though, remains unconcerned. 
I have a contract for next year, and with the new owners coming in, nothing has changed whatsoever from a contractual perspective, Russell said. Lance Stroll returned to his Racing Point cockpit last weekend in Portugal, a stomach bug ruling him out of the previous race held at the Nürburgring. But while it was the Canadian's third straight DNF since his podium at the Italian GP, it was his pre-race revelation on social media that he'd tested positive for COVID-19 on the Monday after the Eiffel Grand Prix that was the bigger story. Stroll self-isolated for 10 days after the positive result, but his subsequent social update was swiftly followed by a statement from Racing Point that explained it had acted in line with protocols throughout and stated the only positive test was after the Eiffel race and that he did not require one for his stomach bug, which dated back to Russia. He consulted with a doctor who did not believe his symptoms indicated COVID-19 and did not advise a test was necessary, said team principal Otmar Zafnauer. Haas will have an all-new driver lineup from 2021, with the squad dropping both Romain Grosjean and Kevin Magnussen at the end of the year, but is in no hurry to finalize it. Financial pressure as a result of COVID-19 forced the team to take action, with flexibility required moving towards F1's new era in 2022, but neither driver expected both to be dropped. I knew one of us would go out, said Grosjean. That's why I said to Gunter when he called me, I was expecting one of us, and he said, no, for financial reasons, I need both of you out. It's understood that Russian young gun Nikita Mazepin, son of billionaire Dmitry, tops the shortlist, with the second seat allegedly between Ferrari Driver Academy stars Mick Schumacher and Robert Schwartzman, both of whom tested for Ferrari this month in a 2018 car. Mercedes benchmark F1 team and its AMG Performance road car brand may be forging closer links from next year, but there are no plans for it to be rebranded in the Mark's image. With Mercedes head of motorsport Toto Wolff removing all doubt as to the identity of the team moving forward. It's always going to be a Mercedes. The chassis is always going to be a Mercedes. The team name is always going to be Mercedes. And we are all Mercedes people, he said. Daimler chairman Ulla Kalenius announced earlier this month that AMG will further leverage F1 expertise, strengthening its commitment to the sport in a contrasting move to rival Renault, which will rebrand as Alpine. Formula One, as the pinnacle of motorsports, that's the highest form of performance. We will use the uh, technology development in Formula One for performance hybrids and going into other exciting technologies in the future and put that into our AMG cars. Yuki Tsunoda's chances of getting on the 2021 grid with Alpha Tauri have been boosted with the FIA tweaking its rules to be able to grant a super license to those unfairly compromised by COVID-19. Currently, drivers must accrue 40 super license points over the last three seasons to be able to race in F1, but the FIA has relaxed its rules in light of the pandemic's effect. with drivers now needing just 30 points, which could even be accrued over three of the last four seasons, as long as they fail to qualify due to circumstances outside their control or reasons of force majeure. The FIA has also relaxed its ruling on super licenses for FP1 runs, with a driver only needing to have completed 100 kilometers on track in a past session within the previous three years. Mercedes team boss Toto Wolff says F1 shouldn't consider a return to the Nürburgring's Nordschleife layout, with the required works to modernize it sure to destroy the whole DNA of the track. 
F1 last raced on the 20-kilometer Nordschleife layout in 1976, one made famous by Niki Lauda's fiery crash. But while the promoters would like to see the sport return once every four years in an Olympic-style bout, Wolf told Beyond the Grid, F1's official podcast, there is no chance. Let's just leave it like it is. It's a thing from the past. GT cars race there and already that is pretty dangerous. I think we should go out there and enjoy a lap with a normal car or with a sports car. But please, let's not destroy the last iconic racetrack. The mooted Nordschleifer project is no doubt a thrilling idea for fans who have lapped up past demonstrations there with a track update involving architect Hermann Tilke and a projected cost of around 100 million US dollars. But Wolf says it's completely unrealistic. If you make it a Formula One car with runoff areas, you destroy the whole thing. That is the appeal of the Nordschleife, that is dangerous, and it's a, that, it, that is a relict of the past. Thanks for watching. To stay up to speed on all things Formula One, make sure you hit the subscribe button.